In this week's market update, Philip Hammond prepares for the autumn budget. Oil hits its fresh two-year high and a raft of trading updates and results for the UK's major supermarkets. Philip Hammond is in the spotlight as he prepares for his autumn budget on the 22nd of November, with the Chancellor investigating controversial reforms to the UK's Green Belt as part of his plan to address the country's housing crisis. There are also rumours that the Chancellor could be said to alleviate business rates in the budget by reducing an increase in the tax due in April next year. With the country's retailers already struggling from the tough conditions on the high street, the concern is that a stark leap in their rate bills next year could weigh heavily on investment plans. Also on the political front, EU and UK officials meet in Brussels this week, with only 17 months left until Britain's expected departure from the European Union in March 2019. In this round of talks, the EU will seek clarification on what the UK is willing to pay, while progress will also need to be made on citizens' rights and the Irish border. US President Donald Trump continues his 11-day visit to Asia, the longest trip to the region by a US president since George Bush in 1991. Trump is seeking support to put pressure on North Korea to abandon its ballistic missile and nuclear weapons programs. He arrived in Tokyo on Sunday and will travel to South Korea on Tuesday and on to China on Wednesday, where he will meet President Xi Jinping. Now this could be an interesting meeting in light of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which opens its 23rd annual conference in Bonn this week to advance the aims and implementation of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. China is ready to take a key role in talks after stepping up its commitments to com combating climate change this year after Donald Trump decided to withdraw from the Paris Climate Accords back in June. President Xi Jinping referred to China as a torchbearer in environmental protection during a landmark three-hour speech at the Communist Party conference last month. The US president also revealed that he has spoken with the Saudi king about listing oil giant Armco in the US. The listing of part of the state oil company is expected to be the biggest initial public offering in the world and is scheduled to take place next year. Saudi authorities plan to list 5% of the company with a hoped-for valuation of $2 trillion. That's around £1.5 trillion. Trump said via Twitter he wanted Saudi Arabia to strongly consider the New York Stock Exchange or Nasdaq or frankly anywhere else located in his country. New York and London are widely seen as the main contenders for the listing, with several cities competing for the business. Prime Minister Theresa May has personally been lobbying the Saudi government for a London float. However, this has prompted major division in the city over whether stock exchange rules should be altered to attract high-value floats like Armco. Saudi Arabia made headlines over the weekend for other reasons after the arrest of 11 princes, four ministers and a large number of former ministers as part of an anti-corruption crackdown by the country's crown prince Mohammed bin Salman. Uncertainty over the situation in Riyadh added to a number of other factors putting upward pressure on oil prices, with oil hitting a fresh two-year high on Monday after the weekend arrests. Brent crew was up 0.8% at $62.55 a barrel on Monday, which is the highest level since July 2015. Back in the UK, the market is expected to be focused on another raft of trading updates and results for major British supermarkets. This will be very closely watched in light of a feeble set of retail sales in October. UK shoppers are cutting their spending on non-essential items as rising inflation makes groceries more expensive. Another sign of the mounting squeeze on consumer spend are the number of new cars registered in the UK, which fell in October, marking the seventh consecutive month of falls. On Wednesday, Marks & Spencer is expected to reveal a fall in profits as the retailer moves forward with its turnaround plan under the steer of Chief Executive Steve Rowe. 
Roe has removed executives, scaled back the chain's international business, shut stores and focused on improving the retailer's product range. Now investors will be watching very closely for signs of a sustainable recovery as the Christmas trading season nears. Investors in Burberry will hope a fall in profits can be stemmed when the fashion retailer reports its half-year results on Thursday. Last week the company announced that Christopher Bailey was abandoning his three-year struggle to carve out a role at the top of the brand which he helped rescue from oblivion. Bailey's departure will leave Burberry trying to shore up its creative team as it struggles to match the profit margins made by its peers. Thursday also sees Sainsbury report its interim results. Now, last month, Britain's second largest supermarket chain revealed plans to axe up to 2,000 jobs as part of efforts to make Sainsbury's a leaner company that can compete with the discount retailers such as Aldi and Lidl. Associated British Foods, the owner of Primark and British Sugar, is gearing up to report a jump in profits this week as its clothing chain continues to improve its share of the UK fashion market. Primark is cashing in as squeezed UK consumers turn to discount retailers for both essential and non-essential items. In the online world, Amazon is putting on the pressure it's cutting prices of products from third-party sellers on its website, moving beyond its more typical method of discounts on items it sells directly. Now, the online retailer has been trying to compete aggressively on some items to win sales and draw customers away from low-priced rivals like Walmart. Meanwhile, China's online giants Alibaba and JD.com are preparing to battle it out on Singles Day this Saturday. The brainchild of Alibaba, Singles Day turned the anti-Valentine's Day on November the 11th into the biggest frenzy of consumption in the retail calendar. Last year, consumers spent $18 billion. Now that's triple the $5.9 billion spent on Black Friday, Cyber Monday and Thanksgiving combined in the US. Staying with the technology companies, Apple got within a whisker of becoming the first trillion dollar business when its quarterly earnings blew away expectations last week. This pushed the company's share price to a record high in after hours trading. Apple has sold 46.7 million iPhones, beating analyst estimates and generating $28.9 billion in revenue iPhone sales accounted for more than half of that revenue. The company was also boosted by a 12% increase in sales in China, the first gain in the region in six quarters. But the big question remains, how will Apple diversify its product portfolio so that it's not so dependent on future iPhones? This week, all eyes will be on Snap, which is of course the maker of the messaging app Snapchat as the company reports third quarter earnings. User engagement and advertising revenue growth will be under the microscope as the company struggles since its float. At the time, back in March, shares reached a high of $29 following the IPO, but in recent weeks they have traded at around $15. The other big news for the technology sector came on Monday when two tech rivals, Intel and Advanced Micro Devices, or AMD for short, announced that they would join forces to build an integrated computer chip. Shares in AMD rallied by 7% following the news of the Intel partnership, which investors may think will give AMD's revenues a much needed boost. Also making headlines on the same day is the bid by chipmaker Broadcom for rival Qualcomm. If the deal goes ahead, the combined company could become the third biggest chip supplier in the world behind Samsung and Intel. Now taking a step away from the tech sector, the travel industry boom continues with three of Europe's budget airlines reporting increased passenger numbers in October. The FTSE 100 listed airline EasyJet grew its numbers of passengers by 9.9%, while its smaller rival, low-cost carrier Wizz Air, reported a 30.5% increase in passenger numbers. Norwegian Air reported even higher numbers. 
This is positive news after the aviation sector suffered a number of blows recently with the collapse of Monarch Airlines and Air Berlin filing for insolvency.